if I had a choice of choosing to describe a character and choosing to describe what the character um, has in their bedroom, I would definitely take the latter because it's more exciting and it's not as direct. Um, and it goes back to what you hear all the time and what I used to teach my students um, when they were doing creative writing, which is, you know, show, don't tell. So if I was telling you about a character, um, how I, you know, kind of scanning a character's bedroom, I found a blood-stained knife, a Bible, and an old woman's blood-stained shoes. I think that's a lot more intriguing for a reader. You immediately in your mind start building or start creating and developing your own ideas of what that person is, who that person is, why are those things in the bedroom, why those particular things? Why have they been kept and not discarded? So a lot of questions start coming to your mind. And it could be that she just went to kill a chicken and took the, maybe someone phoned her, then she ran inside, put the phone down, uh, the knife down and forgot to take it out to wash it. It could be she, her, 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 her grandmother went to an abattoir and took, took her shoes off outside and the girl wanted to clean them and brought them into her room but forgot. There's so many ways of explaining away that particular, um, you know, the, the, the objects that, that I've talked about. However, our minds work in certain ways. So when you hear blood on a knife, your mind immediately goes in a specific direction. And that's what I was saying about sometimes misleading, you know, the reader, or you, 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 you kind of take them down a certain road, even though you're going somewhere else entirely. So just the scope and the opportunity that, that one would have in describing a room, I would find, I mean, um, eminently more att attractive, rather, yeah. The vocabulary that you choose as a writer is totally dependent on the backdrop of the novel or the, the short story. So if you're writing and your characters are young, obviously they're going to employ, they will be using, you know, probably a, a more limited vocab to um, compared to older characters who have a deeper sense of the way the world works. Um, and in terms of, I mean, you talked about slang and jargon. If you're writing a story about university students, again, I would one would expect the language to be totally different from if one was um, trying to, you know, write about people from our parents' generation who also speak a certain way. Um, so what you're constantly doing is trying to capture the reality um, of your characters. And a big part of that is language and the way they interact. And also remember that they're not always talking. You have to remember that, and that language is not always verbal. There's a way somebody will talk to you, and you'll be silent. That silence itself speaks volumes about maybe how much respect or regard you have for the person. And of course, I'm talking about, you know, maybe Yoruba culture, Nigerian culture, your silence how you drop your eyes when an older person or an elderly person is speaking to you. So even though you're not talking, your silence is still saying something. Um, the same thing with hmm or, you see, all those kind of 
not necessarily kind of verbal means through which we interact are important too and must be captured. You can't force humour. And I think you'll find that with most writers, there's a big part of them in their work. Um, so humour comes very naturally to me, but that's because of my family background, the way we laugh at each other. We joke non-stop. In my family, the worst and saddest situation can be turned into something comical. Um, and what it does is that you're looking at an event, it gives you like a, a different lens through which to look at an event. So the humor itself, um, I think is, it can bring levity to the conversation or the situation. Um, and believe me, sometimes it's totally irresponsible, but we've all just, it's just the way that we deal with, um, with kind of melancholic situations. Um, but I, there was no getting away from that for, for me as an author, because that's the way I talk. So many of my friends tell me, for instance, that in reading Baba Segi, they felt I was just talking to them. They could constantly hear my voice in their ear. Um, which was flattering in one sense, but also slightly disheartening for me in another. But the, 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 what, what I found most interesting is the fact that indeed your character as a human being will kind of ult, um, ultimately be revealed in your work. It will come out. So if you're, if, and I consider myself to to be able to engage with both extremes. So where there's a lot of humor, I know that I'm also a very deeply emotional person. Um, and I feel that it's important. If you can make your readers sad, if you can make them feel the pain of a particular character, if you can make them empathize, I think you've done um, a really, really good job. Titles are interesting because you can, as a writer, you can have a title that sounds really clever to you, but other people might read it and think it's absolute rubbish. So. Um, you remember I told you about my, the very first novel that I wrote, it was called Fertility Nails. Even I don't know what I was thinking, um, but it was a ridiculous title. The second book was called Harlot, which I thought was an excellent title. And a lot of people agreed because, um, you know, there's a way that we say Harlot in Nigeria and the connotations when, when somebody calls a woman a harlot, you can be sure that the person is not a harlot, as in, you know, being a prostitute. It's just, you know, a derisory. It's just you're trying to take that person's humanity away from them. Um, so it was, for me, I thought it was very key um, to, to, have, to have that word. Uh, now, when you look at the word harlot, even in England, it's not a word that's very commonly used. So they would use like floozy or prostitute or ho, which is kind of more recent, especially in America. Ho is a, a word that a lot of people use. You hear a lot of it in rap music. So the word harlot was significant and, and apt and appropriate for, the, um, for that particular book. Um, the Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives, I chose because I just, I always liked long titles. Um, 
I always like long titles like Aunt Julia and the Scripts Writer. There are just a few titles that I've come across that I kind of liked. So I wanted a long title. And, um, and I like the fact that you've got wives rhyming with lives. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, when you're choosing titles, I would say that, and from the perspective of a publisher, um, people often, they're, they're, the manuscripts often come with, with titles and which can be quite funny. Um, like, um, I remember um, Hadiza um, El Rafai's novel. The first, the, her, her initial title was Life After Death, which may have been good for like a ghost story or, you know, or a horror story. I don't even know, but it just wasn't an exciting title. Not only that, it was too, it, it probably suited a work that was more um, like popular fiction as opposed to literary fiction. So we needed something that was more kind of serious, more appealing, more intriguing. So I basically read the book and I kept, uh, so I, I put together 10 potential titles that I just took from the novel itself. So she, she said she would think of other titles. I said, don't worry, I'll do it. So I gave her 10. We eventually shortlisted five, and then we started narrowing them down until we arrived at an abundance of scorpions. And if you remember, there's a passage in the book where she said there was, a, she was describing a desert or, or a road and she said there was an abundance of scorpions. It was actually an abundance of snakes and scorpions. So I said, I don't want an abundance of snakes. So I changed the words round to scorpions and snakes so that we could take that abundance of scorpions, an abundance of scorpions. And um, it's a, a title that's really appealed to everyone. So if you're not, not everybody's good at titles. A lot of writers, they will tell you that they're not very good at titles. Um, and in that case, you really have to just get people around you who are better to help you. So you can send them a list of five and tell them which one really kind of captures your imagination or which one really do you find most appealing. Um, I think that's a really good way to go about it. Mm -hmm.